Our guest today has outlined five key investment strategies we should be thinking about as we head into this new decade and a new year. Tracy McMillian is the head of global asset allocation strategy for Wells Fargo, and she joins me today in studio. Tracy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, as you know, I attended uh, with great pleasure uh, Wells Fargo's annual uh, gathering uh, yesterday where where. I was fascinated by, by your talk because you really outlined five key approaches investors mm -hmm. should be thinking about as we head into to 2020. So I wanted to right. just share this with our audience today. Okay. Um, number one for you that you, you spoke about was that cash has a place in a portfolio, which is something we often forget. That's right, right that's right. Um, and it can have a place in a portfolio all the time for rebalancing and tactical opportunities, but you know, if you have too much cash in a portfolio in a year like 2019, that can be a return drag. But going into 2020, we do see the potential for more volatility and more market swings. So should an asset class go above our target, then we think that would be an opportunity to raise cash. Should it go below the target, we would see an opportunity to invest some of that cash. So this year we do see uh, cash as a tactical tool. Mm, okay, and speaking about uh, the volatility, uh, that kind of leads me to your, to your second point. Mm -hmm. You said quality is going to be super key here. So focus on quality. Yes, yes, go up in quality in both equities and fixed income. So for equity, we're suggesting moving away from small caps, which tend to have lower quality earnings, and into high quality U.S. large caps. And the particular sectors that we're looking at for those high quality earnings uh, and uh, those that are increasing their dividends or increasing their buybacks uh, are especially attractive to us. And those are things like information technology, consumer discretionary, and we like financials as well on their quality factors. Now, with this, the latest news, uh, you know, with the U.S.-China trade deal, has that uh, changed the sectors that you feel are going to be, uh, you know, better than others? And not so much because we're screening on those quality factors. Mm -hmm. So are their earnings strong? Do they have very strong balance sheets? Do they have you know, strong cash flows? Those are the, the things that we're looking for and the sectors that have those uh, tend to be those that I, I just highlighted. Now, you know, in fixed income, we're also taking a more cautious approach. And you mentioned the trade deal or, or not. Um, and, and that's one of the things that causes us some concern going into the new year because most of these problems we've been saying for a while are political and binary. So that could have markets fluctuating on the news just like they are right now. Do you think that could be the number one wild card in 2020? It, it very well could be, but we've got an election here in the U.S. as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would say that those two it's are. are <laughs> All right. Uh, Tracy, your point number three, you say go beyond traditional fixed income for potential yield. Right, right. So, you know, we think that this low rate environment is going to persist right. and our clients are looking for yield. So you have to kind of go beyond treasuries to find those higher yields. And, and they're out there, but they're in places like um, higher quality corporate securities or uh, residential backed mortgage securities or preferred securities. Um, also look in equities because um, particularly international equities right. have very attractive dividends. Um, developed markets at about 3.4% dividends and emerging markets at about 3% dividends are really attractive ways to get that income. And that's a really good point because do you feel we've been so U.S. centric that it's important to kind of think outside the box and remain diversified? It is, yes. It's important to be diversified globally, we believe, because we have had so much um, return from the U.S. markets over the last decade relative to the rest of the world. And we've been overweight U.S. markets relative to the rest of the world and continue to be so in 2020. But we're still globally diversified and we're recommending that clients remain globally diversified. Your fourth key tactic mm -hmm. is that defense can be a good 
offense. That's right. right. So within the portfolio, we are more defensive going into 2020. Mm. And I mentioned how we're moving up capitalization within the U.S. markets. We're also moving up in quality within fixed income. So, you know, we're moving away from high yield and into those investment grade. But one asset class that's particularly defensive are hedge funds. And so we would suggest for those investors that qualify, looking at hedge funds going into 2020, particularly equity hedge that can benefit from both up markets and down markets. Well, I think that's a concern and a lot of questions that I get is that, you know, how, how long can this U.S. equities Mm. run last and a lot of you know mm. investors are wondering should I you know how do you know when to get out when you know, on your level of, of of greed I guess I could say is how you know how can you protect yourself in this environment mm -hmm. yeah and and you know we really never know exactly when that turns gonna come you know in this particular expansion which has now lasted almost 11 years which right. is the longest on record we have had two what I call near bears and and that's where the markets have gone right. down 19 percent. So you never know when that might tip into a bear market. Right. Um, what you can do, though, is position your portfolio defensively with hedge funds, um, with going up in quality and capitalization, and also uh, using those defensive sectors mm -hmm. like utilities. Um, real estate's another one. And we think that those will do well because of their higher yields. And, and, and Tracy, you know, we, we start I guess in mainstream media, it's speaking about the yield curve, mm -hmm. um, you know, s since it's re-inverted, as to right. say. But you know, something that came up yesterday that was that it could still be a precursor um, for a recession. We saw this when it happened in 2006, and then we know what happened in 08. Mm -hmm. um, so is that something that we should still be paying attention to? It is, yes, exactly. Because in, in past recessions, the yield curve has typically inverted, you know, before mm -hmm. the recession mm -hmm. hit. And that could be the case again. Um, when the Fed cut rates last year, all they did really was bring the shorter rates down below the long rate. So it was their cuts that caused it to move out of inversion. And so it's something that we're continuing to watch and you know could be a precursor for so more it difficult mean times. The <laughs> storm is coming in 2020 per se, but that it's a mm -hmm. watch scenario. Yes, All right. exactly. All right. Your fifth and uh, final tactic to, to think mm -hmm. about you say focus on longer term diversification as shorter periods are likely to be volatile. Yes, exactly. So, you know, clients who are watching the day to day movement and reacting to day to day headlines are going to see a lot more volatility in their portfolio. And, you know, even a diversified portfolio over a one year period can have large swings. We went back to 1989 and we we measured the year-to-year -year swings, and they are anywhere from negative 22% up to 29%, so about a 51% swing in a balanced, diversified portfolio. But you stretch that out over 10 years, and that range of returns narrows considerably to about 5.3% percent up to 14. So you have a lot less variation in your returns if you look at the long term. All right, Tracy, all uh, very valid and uh, good points as we head into 2020. Any final thoughts for investors watching? Sure. So we would just say uh, remain globally diversified, go up in quality, have a little cash in the portfolio because we think there will be opportunities to deploy it. Fantastic. Tracy, happy holidays to you. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. And thank you for watching um, Tracy as part of our Outlook series. We'll have much more for you, so be sure to stay tuned to Kiko.com.